Um, all right. Uh, well, thanks a lot for coming. Um, I'm excited to share this material with you all. Um, and uh, thank you for the invitation as well. Um, so before I get started, this is joint work with David Ayala and Nick Rosenblum. Um, I put a link to the slides if there's something you want to look back at um, uh, <clears throat> in the chat. And this is based on a paper that we have called Derived Mackie Functors and stuff, and to some lesser extent, also um, uh, another paper called Stratified Non-Commuted Geometry. So what I want to tell you about is a new, uh, a new way of doing computations. Um, I think that these ideas um, in various forms have been in the air for a while. Um, and, uh, and then I'll give some examples of, uh, of applying this formalism, um, but the one thing I want you to take away is that there are a ton of computations that ha have not been done and can be done uh, using this new formalism. Uh, so I'll indicate those towards the end. Um, so here's the outline. I'll tell you about equivariant cohomology um, using genuine G spectra. And this has, again, a stratification, which I'll, I'll tell you about. Um, and then we'll talk some about derived Mackey functors and, and then I'll tell you about the computations. Um, okay, so let's start with uh, G spectra. So throughout uh, G is going to be a finite group here. Um, and let's just remember what, uh, how spectra are related to cohomology. So um, if I have a space and I want to take its cohomology, say i cohomology, that's an abelian group. Um, and this construction uh, factors through uh, the suspension spectrum functor from spaces to spectra. Um, namely, uh, the cohomology by which I mean cohomology with, with coefficients in Z uh, is homotopy classes of maps uh, um, of spectra um, from the suspension spectrum into uh, the ith suspension um, of, of the eilenberg mclean spectrum for Z. Um, so this is the non-equivariant situation. And in equivariant homotopy theory, um, there's a bit more going on. So I'll, I'll show the slide and then talk through it. So once again, we're interested in the equivariant cohomology um, of spaces, but now spaces uh, with G action. In fact, what are called genuine G spaces. So what this means is that we keep track, um, not just of a space or a homotopy type um, with a homotopical action of G, um, but rather we keep track of all of the strict fixed points. Um, so this is what's interesting for example, if you're studying like manifolds with G action, um, uh, you don't just want to know like homotopy fixed points. Um, and so now we can take equivariant cohomology uh, as I'll explain, and this gives us a Mackey functor for G. So that's, that's what this notation uh, is short for. It's Mackey functors for G. And let me um, discuss those for a moment. So, uh, the original definition of Mackey functor was an assignment uh, to each subgroup of G of an abelian group, and then you have different. You have two different functorialities: uh, covariant functoriality and contravariant. So when you include subgroups uh, one into the next, um, you have uh, homomorphisms of abelian groups going in both directions, and um, and these have have to satisfy uh, various conditions such as the double coset formula. Um, so there's a, uh, there's a sort of quicker definition, uh, which I like. Um, it's less to remember, uh, which is that a Mackey functor for G, valued in abelian groups, it's an additive functor from the Burnside category for G into the category of abelian groups. So additive meaning it takes direct sums, direct sums. So what is burn here? Well, it's actually a, a two one category. So it's a category except that it's Homs or groupoids. Um, so an object is a finite set and a morphism is a span of finite sets. Um, and then it also has two morphisms and these are all just isomorphisms. That's why it's a two one category. Um, and by the way, these, these functorialities are, are called restriction and transfer. Um, so why are these definitions equivalent? Well, let me at least give a little indication of that. So 
again, we're supposed to have these two sorts of functoriality. Suppose we have two nested subgroups of G. Well, this gives us a map of finite G sets, uh, G mod H to G mod K. And um, that gives us two different morphisms in the Burnside category. So remember it's objects or finite G sets and morphisms or spans. So we can take this map of finite G sets and we can either read it as a forwards map or as a backwards map. You see the source and target have been swapped. Here it's G mod H, here it's G mod K. And the assignment over here goes to the restriction map. So these are abelian groups. So we're restricting uh, fixed points. Um, and, uh, and, and then here is the, the transfer. Uh, so these are these are maps of abelian groups, and these are maps in the Burnside category. Um, so that's the algebraic structure present on equivariant cohomology of G spaces, and then uh, whatever the heck genuine G spectra is, and we'll talk more about that in a moment. Um, this this functor likewise factors through there, um, and so here's the formula uh, analogous to this one. Equivariant cohomology is well, it's, as I just said, it's a Mackey functor. So um, it assigns to a finite G set, which let's just talk about G mod H. It assigns this um, abelian group of homotopy classes of maps of G spectra. So it's a map once again out of X, but now this G mod H gets involved um, by taking this tensor product of G spectra. Um, there's once again an eilenberg maclean spectrum, which is now a somewhat more um, uh, elaborate notion. Um, and so the, the coefficients here are in what's called the constant Mackey functor at Z. Um, and, uh, ah, and, and so there's one thing I haven't discussed here. So this I is an integer, but then there's also this V around. And let me talk about that. So V here is, a virtual representation of G. So ROG is the ring of, of virtual representations. Um, and these give invertible, tensor invertible G spectra. Um, so if V is an actual representation, then you take its one point compactification and you take its suspension spectrum. And so that's some sort of sphere, genuine sphere spectrum, but it has a G action. Uh, and more generally, if it's a formal difference, then you, uh, well, you take the, the formal difference in this, in this group of invertible elements or the actual difference. Um, okay, so ultimately that, so, so this is the general formula for equivariant cohomology as, as homotopy classes maps of G spectra, just like ordinary cohomology was homotopy classes maps of spectra. Um, so this is already interesting and non-trivial in the case where the space is just a point. So, so there it is. Um, this formula simplifies a bit. So, um, uh, so one one thing. So, so the the target here just shows up there, um, and now x is just a point, and so this is the sphere spectrum, and so it just drops out when you're tensoring with it. And then now Homs out of G mod H, that's the same thing as H fixed points or more specifically what's called often categorical H fixed points. So just an upper H like that means Hom out of G mod H. Um, and this is the quantity that is uh, assembles into equivariant cohomology uh, as a Mackey, the values of equivariant cohomology is the categorical fixed points of this tensor product of um, of genuine G spectra. So this is the equivariant cohomology of a point uh, in dimension I plus V, where V is a virtual representation and I is an integer. Okay, so that's that's the thing that we're studying. Um, this is, uh, there are a lot of really interesting computations um, out there of equivariant cohomology, even the equivariant cohomology of a point. Um, and that's one of the ones I'll, I'll be discussing in a minute. Um, so something that makes this whole perspective a little um, more tautological uh, is a really nice conceptual perspective on G spectra, which is a theorem due to uh, Guillaume and Clark Barwick that 
um, G spectra are actually equivalent to Mackey functors for G not valued in abelian groups as we just saw up there, but valued in spectra. So by that, I mean additive functors from the Burnside category into spectra. And what are we doing? Well, we take a G spectrum and we record all of its categorical fixed points. Um, so again, that's HOM out of the genuine G suspension spectrum of G mod H. Um, so you can think of this as sort of like a presentation of the category of G spectra. Whatever other definition you might have had, this is another way of thinking about them. Um, it's, it's the data of all of the categorical fixed points along with the various structure maps that ought to exist between them. There's no more or less to remember your G spectrum. Okay, so that's very nice, um, but there's a problem uh, if you're interested in computing equivariant cohomology, which remember it's, uh, you can take these categorical fixed points and then you take pi zero of that spectrum, right? This is just a spectrum in the end. Um, the problem is that, well, there are these interesting tensor products. This is just a suspension, but this is an interesting spectrum and that's an interesting spectrum. Um, and, uh, and, um, the, the problem is that, the, that this, this model for G spectra doesn't play nicely with tensor products of G spectra. Um, specifically, it, tensor products of G spectra are not the same as pointwise tensor product of spectral Mackey functors. Um, just said differently, because what are the values, their categorical fixed points. I'm just saying that if you tensor two G spectra together, the categorical fixed points are not the same as the tensor product of uh, their individual categorical fixed points. Um, so there's a different type of fixed points called geometric fixed points. Um, and, uh, whoa, okay, yeah, we'll just go to here. So there, so it's, it's denoted phi h. Uh, there's a formula for it. If this isn't familiar, you can just ignore it. Um, but, uh, the, the advantage here is that this functor is symmetric monoidal, so it commutes with tensor products. And moreover, these, these functors also collectively see everything there is to see about genuine G spectra. So this is a theorem due to Greenlee's. Um, it's called the geometric fixed points whitehead theorem. Um, so the whitehead theorem says that for maps of CW complexes, if it's an isoon homotopy group, so it's a homotopy equivalence. And this is a similar flavor of theorem. If, if we have a map of G spectra and it's an equivalence on geometric fixed points for all subgroups, then it's actually an equivalence of G spectra. So another way to say that is that these functors are all jointly conservative. Um, and contrast that with a familiar fact, perhaps one of the first things you learn uh, in equivariant homotopy theory is that um, you can't just remember the underlying spectrum with homotopy G action. There's more to it. This is what the word genuine is all about. Um, so just the forgetful functor from G spectra to um, a spectrum with a homotopical G action. So a functor from BG spectra, that's a functor. That's something you can, that's a construction you can do, but that's not a conservative functor. Um, so in the unstable situation, this is, uh, uh, well, it's like the difference between EG and a point. So their underlying spaces are equivalent, but with their G actions, they're not equivalent. Um, and we'll use in just a moment that th you can consider these uh, homotopy G spectra as genuine G spectra by a functor called beta, which is the inclusion of the Borel complete G spectra. So these are the ones whose categorical fixed points actually are just equivalent to their homotopy fixed points. So that's a special property a G spectrum can satisfy. Um, okay, so, so these geometric fixed points functors are symmetric monoidal and they collectively detect uh, equivalences of G spectra. So, right, we had this problem uh, with the model by spectral Mackey functors, um, that it's not compatible with tensor products. And so what that suggests is a solution to this problem that 
that we could might use geometric fixed points instead of categorical fixed points in order to give a presentation of the category of G spectra. Um, you can sort of think of this as like two different bases of a vector space, um, but it's not just a vector space. It, ha it has a commutative um, multiplication, a symmetric minoidal structure. And this one is compatible with that in a way that this one is not really. So it's like the structure constants are, are simpler. Um, okay, so that's a, um, th these, these two facts together suggest that hint of a solution. Um, and in fact, uh, in the simplest case, this was, uh, there's already a very classical uh, result that um, indicates how this might go. Um, so that example is um, when the group is CP. So uh, CP just has two subgroups. There's itself and there's the trivial subgroup. And um, the observation due to Greenleaf and May is that genuine CP spectra um, are all, all, to know a genuine CP spectrum, all you need to know is its underlying homotopy CP spectrum, uh, AKA it's fixed points for the trivial subgroup. And then you also need to know it's geometric CP fixed points. And then there's a little bit more. You also need to know um, the sort of gluing data of a morphism this way. So um, this is a map of spectra, right? This is a spectrum. And then this is a homotopy CP spectrum. But then there's uh, this construction that we can do to it. First, you take Borel, uh, and then you take geometric fixed points. Um, and so then there's, there, there is a map this way. It's just the unit for uh, this adjunction, U, U and beta. Um, um, but you know, this, this, these two functors involve uh, genuine G spectra, but they have a description that's just completely non-genuine. Namely, it's, um, it's the CP Tate construction. So given a homotopy CP spectrum, you can take its homotopy uh, quotient or its homotopy fixed points. And there's a map between these called the norm map. And the Tate construction is the cofiber of the norm map. So you're taking the homotopy fixed points and then you quotient by norms. And that's what this, this composite functor is. So I'll write it like this, it's this, uh, homotopy CP spectrum, and then you do the take construction. Um, so another way of saying all of this um, more concisely is that CP spectra is equivalent to, um, well, just some categorical construction involving these two categories and this functor between them. That's all I needed in order to describe uh, these three pieces of data. And specifically that categorical construction is called a right lax limit. So what does that mean? Well, it's exactly what I wrote up here, but let's just talk about it in general. So if I've got a functor, this is a diagram of categories. Um, it's right lax limit is going to be an object of the first category and an object of the second category. And then I've got this functor so I can push this object forwards. And then I'm going to ask also for a morphism such as this morphism right here. So this is a morphism in D. Up here, we had a morphism in spectra, which is that target. Um, and so, I, I mean, you can also say, well, it's this ordinary limit of a slightly different diagram of categories. It's a morphism in D, an object of C, but then you require that the target of that morphism is the, the value of, of the object in C. Um, and just to kind of indicate where this lives, there's also, you can take the strict limit. Um, and this is, well, it's by, by strict, I always mean like homotopically correct. So this is going to be an object of C, an object of D, and an equivalence between the value uh, of the functor here and that object. And well, C is an initial object of this <laughs> very small diagram. So that strict limit is equivalent to just C itself. Once you know C, you know what D has to be. Um, and then, um, and, and you know, that includes into the right lax limit because, well, an equivalence is a morphism. Um, and then 
just to indicate what is the deal with the word right, well, I could have also put the word left here. Um, and we would have almost the same thing, but now the morphism goes the other way. So the strict limit includes into the right lax and into the left lax limit. Um, but this is this is the one that's relevant for us is the right lax limit. That's just what shows up in nature. Um, okay, so again, this is a hint of how we might generally hope to give a presentation for G spectra in terms of geometric fixed points, which happily are symmetric monoidal functors. Um, and this is very helpful for computing cohomology, uh, equivariant cohomology. So for example, I mean, this is a, this is a limit type description of this category. And that means that it, it gives you a formula for computing Homs because uh, in a limit of categories, Homs in a limit of categories are, are the limit of the Homs in the pieces. Um, so if you unpack that, what you'll see uh, in this, in this in this case, if you unpack it, you'll see that Homs of CP spectra from say F to E is a pullback like this. So it's a Hom in homotopy CP spectra, and then two different Homs in spectra um, involving various different pieces um, of the data that F and E are being recorded by, right? They're geometric fixed points, and then the underlying spectrum, but then also the Tate, Tate CP construction of that. And let's just specialize further. This is, um, let's take F to be the sphere spectrum. So that's CP mod CP. Remember, HOM out of that is categorical fixed points, CP fixed points. And this HOM formula specializes down to, um, if you unpack what these are saying, it's the homotopy CP fixed points of the underlying spectrum, uh, fiber producted with the geometric fixed points uh, over the Tate construction. Um, and if you're familiar with this, let me point out another way that you might have seen the same fact is that there's essentially this isotropy separation sequence. It's a fiber sequence. And you can apply it to this, this unit map for the genuine CP spectrum E. And um, well, you get two fiber sequences and the map on fibers is the same. Therefore, this is a pullback square. So the categorical fixed points are the pullback of that right there. Um, and, and this is exactly what I just wrote there a moment ago. Um, so this HOM formula generalizes this familiar, potentially familiar formula for categorical fixed points. Okay, so that's again, an indication of the simplest non-trivial example of presenting G spectra in terms of geometric fixed points. Um, and with that, I can state um, the main, uh, one of the main theorems. So, oh, and I should say this was, uh, inspired by some work of Saul Glassman as well. So here's the notation is, uh, so I'll write PG for the poset of subgroups of G. And these are gonna be ordered by sub conjugacy. So there's a map from one to another if the first one is subconjugate to the second. And then, so given a subgroup, I'll write W of H for the vial group, which means the quotient, uh, the normalizer mod the group. Um, so that's, you know, if the group is abelian, this is just the quotient group. And the reason it's showing up, uh, by the way, is, is this is the, the monoid of um, G equivariant maps from G mod H to G mod H. It's in fact a group and it's this group. Um, so here's the theorem. It's that G spectra are always equivalent to some right lax limit. Um, so let me just indicate a little bit of what's going on here, and then I'll, I'll give an example that illustrates uh, and generalizes uh, the CP example. Um, okay, so first of all, what, so this is the right lax limit of some, some diagram of categories indexed by this poset. So again, the objects of the poset are subgroups. And where do I take that object? Well, I take it to homotopy, um, W of H spectra. And um, so what, what then is going to be this equivalence? Well, I take a G spectrum and I'm supposed to take it to some system of objects of these categories and then some, some gluing data, um, which I'll describe, but what are the objects of those categories? Well, 
I take a G spectrum E, and then for each H, uh, the homotopy W of H spectrum I assign is the geometric fixed points. So that's the thing I'm going to remember. And I'm also going to remember some gluing data, for instance, this structure map like that. Um, and then there's one other uh, thing going on here, which is that this is actually not an ordinary functor, but rather a left lax functor. So what that means is that it takes commutative triangles to laxly commutative triangles. So um, rather than talk in any generality about what that means, let me just describe the example. So the example is uh, CP squared spectra. Um, and now it's post set of subgroups is like this. Um, we've just got uh, the trivial subgroup CP and CP squared itself. And um, so the theorem says that genuine G spectra, genuine CP spectra are the right lax limit of, of this diagram. And here I can just spell it out uh, what the terms are. So the, again, the value at each subgroup is um, homotopy W of H spectra, which remember that's what we're in the abelian case. So that's just G mod H. So here for E, we have CP squared mod E, which is just CP squared. Here at CP, we have CP squared mod CP, which is CP. And then CP squared mod CP squared is the trivial group. Um, okay, and then the, the theorem, the main theorem here is, is this um, presentation. In other words, an equivalence. Um, we're presenting this in terms of some other things. Um, and so, uh, yes, yeah, so, so again, this is a left lax diagram, meaning that this commutative triangle turns into that lax commutative triangle. And these, the, the structure maps in this diagram generally are always going to be the Tate construction or some version of it, a uh, slight variant called the proper Tate construction. Um, so these two are just actually the Tate construction for CP. Um, and then this one going from uh, assigned to that morphism is the proper Tate construction for CP squared. So I'll write tau for that instead of T. And this is uh, a slight variant rather than just quotienting by norms from the trivial subgroup, you quotient by norms from all proper subgroups. Um, and a theorem in the background here is that, well, this is again, very closely related to equivariant homotopy theory. It's just the thing you get where you pick a homotopy G spectrum, consider it as Borel complete genuine, and then take geometric fixed points. So what is this right lax limit? In other words, what is our presentation of genuine CP squared spectra? Well, once again, it's an object of each category. And then every time you have a functor like this, you have a morphism into the value um, so that, uh, of the functor. So that explains part of this. We've got the three objects, E0, E1, and E2, living in these three categories. And then because we have this morphism, we have this assignment, and that goes, uh, and then we have this gluing data, this map gamma 0, 01. Um, and that also explains E2 mapping to E1 Tate CP and mapping to E0 tau CP squared. Um, but then there's a little bit more compatibility to ask for. Um, namely, we've got a square because there's this natural transformation. So at E0, that's a canonical map like this from tau CP squared to Tate CP, Tate CP. On the other hand, we have this morphism and we can apply this functor to the whole thing. And so we're getting this morphism right here. And the extra compatibility and this is maybe the only time I'll say it, is that really um, I've been working infinity categorically, um, is that you have to remember the data of a homotopy that makes this square commute. Um, so one way or another, if you try to do this strictly with like a point set model of G spectra, you'll need to build in those homotopies. Um, and I'll call this gamma 
zero, one, two, because it's also some form of gluing data, right? Rather than a morphism, it's a commutative square. And in general, one would have like higher dimensional cubes and stuff. Um, and so this is sort of higher categorical gluing data um, associated to the fact that there is this commutative triangle here, not just a single morphism. Um, so this, again, uh, helps us compute equivariant cohomology. Uh, for instance, uh, you can compute categorical CP squared fixed points as a, a, a limit. Um, now it's indexed over a punctured three-dimensional cube, a punctured two-dimensional cube. That's just a pullback. That was what we saw above. And well, as you can see, it just, it involves, if we have this genuine CP squared spectrum, I'll write this for short. So that's the um, geometric fixed points for various subgroups. And then all three of those, E0, E1, and E2 are involved in different ways. And you're taking Tate and homotopy fixed points and proper Tate. And then these all um, assemble together into a diagram and you take the limit of that. So that's a formula for the spectrum whose homotopy groups are equivariant cohomology of a point with coefficients in E. Um, and again, the major advantage here is that this is a symmetric monoidal presentation of the category. Um, and so it's much more amenable for computing tensor products. You do compute those point-wise because geometric fixed points is symmetric monoidal. Um, so um, as an aside, and this is what gets towards the other paper um, that I mentioned at the beginning, this is coming from some general structure called the stratification of the category of G spectra over the poset piece of G, the poset of subgroups. Um, and in fact, it's a symmetric monoidal stratification, which is to say that all the projection functors are symmetric monoidal. Um, and this is the same structure that you'll see. It's formally analogous. Um, to stratifications coming from stratified geometry. So for example, if you have a scheme and it's stratified over some poset P, you get what we call a stratification of its category of quasi-current sheaves. So for example, with spec Z, this has um, what deserves to be called an adelic stratification over this poset right here um, of points of spec Z. So we've got all the primes here and then this generic point. And so for instance, this will record a quasi-current sheaf, AKA a Z module. Um, in terms of its rationalization, that's kind of assigned to this point and all of its P completions assigned to these various points and then some gluing data as well. Um, another example that might be familiar is that the category of spectra has, um, what we call a chromatic stratification over this poset. So this is um, what's called the Balmer spectrum of spectra. So it's got all of these different points corresponding to chromatic heights uh, and corresponding as well to primes. And then there's also this generic point. Um, and, and then also if you have a stratified topological space, you get a stratification of its category of sheets. So all this is to say that G spectra are behaving a whole lot like sheaves on some sort of stratified space. Um, although that's not quite literally true, um, but it's, it's very close to true and you can treat it as such. Um, so I just wanted to indicate, I mean, there are many, many examples you can do, but um, for example, uh, for the symmetric group S3, you can use the theorem to describe genuine S3 spectra in terms of homotopy uh, spectra with respect to various vial groups. Um, and it turns out a lot of the functors in this diagram are zero. Um, and so in the end, it's actually pretty down to earth. Um, it's four spectra, one, two, three, four, and then just three structure maps. There's this one, this one, and this one. And even though this diagram is kind of complicatedly shaped, uh, right, it has a uh, is like lax triangles and stuff, enough stuff vanishes that there's no like 
commutativity squared data or anything like that. Um, in a different direction, you can apply this to um, proper genuine S1 spectra, and then after that to cyclotomic spectra. Um, that's a totally different talk, um, but that was the original motivation for all of this. Okay, so that was the story of G spectra and uh, how they're related to equivariant homology. Um, and then the stratification that helps us compute that. Um, and now I'll talk about derived Mackey functors. So now we're just talking about, um, you know, ordinary cohomology here. So spectra are all about generalized cohomology theories. But if we're just talking about equivalent uh, ordinary cohomology, like singular cohomology, we can just use chain complexes. Um, that's in the non-equivariant situation, uh, AKA the derived category of Z. So um, here's the extension of the above uh, diagrams. So cohomology of spaces valued in abelian groups that factors not just through spectra, but through derived Z modules. And you, you, you can take a spectrum and Z linearize it. Now, if you do that here, uh, with a suspension spectrum, you're just ultimately getting the complex of singular chains um, and certainly uh, cohomology factors through that by construction. And in the equivariant situation, well, this, this is what derived Mackey functors are, is they are the equivariant version of uh, the derived category of Z. So again, let's remember this theorem that G spectra are equivalently uh, spectral Mackey functors. And so the idea is just you replace spectra with derived Z modules. And there's a functor this way, which just says Z linearize all of your values. That's additive. Um, so it takes spectra to Z modules and preserves direct sums. Um, and so these are called derived Mackey functors for the group G. And then for instance, we have a formula in these terms for equivariant cohomology. And let's just talk about equivariant cohomology of a point. So again, this is some Mackey functor. Um, this is some Mackey functor and uh, it assigns G mod H to some ultimately just some homology group of a, of a chain complex. That's, that's the value uh, in here. Um, and this notion of derived Mackey functors goes back to Kaladin, uh, who studied, uh, so derived Mackey functors, again, that's Mackey functors in the derived category of Z. And this is to be contrasted with the derived category of the abelian category of Mackey functors. Um, and the observation is that this one is good in a way that this one is less good. Um, you see, we're just interchanging where the D goes. And um, if you're working here, you're sort of, uh, well, you're doing homological algebra with Mackey functors. And um, this, it turns out for computations, you're sort of on the wrong side of a spectral sequence. Um, whereas here, you're, um, th things are much more uh, algorithmic as I'll discuss a little bit more. So um, anyway, so this is the context that we work in and it's similar to, but different from this. So um, can I make a comment there? So yeah, that's please. like, this is like a really unusual situation, right? Like, like, isn't like, it seems like, like the history of modern, you know, homotopy theory is that you want to look at derived, you know, you know, the derived category of the category of diagrams, not diagrams in the derived category. And this is going against that. Sort of, but really, I'm at the infinity level. Um, so the the so this is you know this is still remembering all of the higher homotopies. Um, so I wouldn't say that okay, it's like see. going against that, but it is true. Um, I, I guess it would take. I, I don't know an a priori reason um, to prefer this over this, other than if you actually just kind of take some first steps in trying to do computations, you'll see. Uh, that this one is straightforward in a way that this one is not. Um, yeah, so, okay, so we can compute equivariant cohomology of G spaces uh, by computing HOMs in this in, uh, category 
or really it's enriched in complexes and then you take H0, uh, the zeroth homology group. So, uh, well, there's the same problem, which is that these categorical fixed points functors, now they land in derived abelian groups with homotopy WH action. Again, this is not monoidal. Um, and again, the solution is that there's an alternative basis, so to speak, um, by geometric fixed points. So here's the same theorem, but just Z linear. Um, so derived Mackey functors are equivalent to the right lax limit of some left lax diagram uh, structured over this post set that takes this subgroup to this category of derived abelian groups with homotopical WH action. And again, the gluing functors, like the morphisms in here, go to what I'll call gluing functors, and these are proper Tate constructions. So the difference here is that Z linearization does not commute with the Tate construction. Um, in fact, the Tate, Tate construction in here is way, way simpler than Tate construction in spectra. Um, and so as a result, I would say this failure of commutativity is a feature and not a bug. So for example, uh, if you do Tate CP, Tate CP, that's just zero. Uh, if you do proper Tate CP squared, that's zero. These are things that are very non-trivial in, in spectra, but Z linearly, they are literally trivial. And so this dramatically simplifies what the stratification is giving us. Um, so in the stratification of CP to the N uh, drive Mackey functors, here's the post set of subgroups. It's just linearly ordered. Um, all, all of, so, so there's, you know, potentially gluing functors for all morphisms in this post set. But if it's not like an adjacent morphism, uh, you know, from just I to I plus one, it's zero. And moreover, if you compose gluing functors, so, so that would be like this one, or if you compose gluing functors like that, you also get zero. And so at the end of the day, you get a very, very simple description of derived Mackey functors. Let's just say for CPBN, but for any group, this is also going to be true. There will generally be simplifications. It's, it's just a, a system like this. It's just a, a handful of objects and then a handful of morphisms and no higher gluing data whatsoever. So in the CP squared case, you know, there is still this formula where you, the categorical CP fixed points are um, uh, so the, the limit of some punctured cube, but then these terms drop out. And so the, in fact, even categorical CP to the N fixed points are just this iterated uh, homotopy pullback. Um, and this makes computations, uh, I would say algorithmic, simple enough that I can do them. Um, I, well, let, let me conclude by uh, indicating a few of those. So these are definitely still non-trivial, but algorithmic in particular, uh, it, you don't need spectral sequences to do these computations. Okay, so now we specialize to an odd prime, uh, simplifies things a little bit as we'll see. So here's a first corollary is that the Picard group of drive Mackey functors, which an amazing recent theorem uh, due to Aachen Krauss is that that's actually equivalent Picard group of G spectra. Um, it's just this abelian group right here. Um, this is for all CP to the N for all N. So you've got these free components, those are recording dimensions. And then there's this interesting arithmetic component. You take this ring, you take its units, and then you quotient by Z mod two. And um, how do we prove this? Well, these functors are symmetric monoidal. So they carry Picard elements to Picard elements. If you're tensor invertible, homomorphism preserves that. And then here's the simplification. Because P is odd, the only CPVN action, CPVN minus I action on Z is just the trivial action, right? C, C2 can act by a sign, but not C3. And so here the Picard group is, is just shifts of Z, um, which together just form an additive copy of Z. And then the interesting part, the fun part is you figure out which gluing data between these various, so the geometric fixed points of a Picard element have here, all just have to be shifts of Z. 
And then you say, what are the gluing data that uh, actually give you a Picard element back upstairs here? And that's where you're getting this arithmetic. And it's these, these gluing data elements are, are, are essentially elements of Tate cohomology classes, uh, Tate cohomology. Um, so uh, let me just briefly, uh, let me finish by saying what, uh, what, what else we do with this. Um, so, you know, of course we, we made this simplification. This was more of a proof of concept, but um, you can apply this to many other groups. Uh, there are some partial uh, various results here. Um, we also use this to compute the homomorphism. So equivalent cohomology is usually ROG graded. That was this, this V that I had in the formula. And um, here's something you can compute is elements of ROG give Picard elements um, of G spectra or of drive Mackey functors. And in these terms, in, in terms of this presentation of that abelian group, um, we can just completely compute what this homomorphism is. Um, so here are the formulas. The trivial representation goes, well, it goes to the identity element of this Picard group. Um, and then here are the other EREPs, which generate this, and so generate this. As, this as a monoid, this as a abelian group. Um, and there are some some interesting formulas involving uh, the p-valuation of of like what root of unity you're talking about and stuff. Um, and finally, uh, let me just show this third corollary is that um, we very explicitly compute equivariant cohomology of a point. So the equivariant cohomology of point in dimension i an integer plus l, l is a Picard element, uh, L like for line bundle, but in particular, it can be indexed over ROG um, using the, this, this explicit formula. And it's, um, it's a Mackey functor. So it takes G mod H to some homology group of, well, this completely explicit diagram of chain complexes. So here's, here are these formulas. These are all free uh, chain complexes of free rank one modules. So this is like really, really just linear algebra. Um, there are these three things, they assemble into some zigzag like this and you can take the homotopy limit, that's like a, a cone construction in chain complexes. And then you take the minus i homology group of that, that explicit chain complex and that computes for you this equivariant cohomology of a point. Um, previously using Mackey functors and or, um, homological algebra of Mackey functors, uh, it was computed the CP and CP squared. And here we do for CP and for all n. Um, so there are, again, um, there are a lot of open questions here. Um, we don't compute the multiplicative structure like the green or Tambara functor structure. Um, and also, again, we just do this system of, of groups and you could imagine applying this to any other groups or honestly, it's kind of crazy that like computations in equivariant cohomology are usually, are, are very often just of the point. And there are many other interesting G spaces out there. Um, and I think that this uh, technique is hopefully fruitful for doing such computations. Um, and I'll stop there. Sorry for going over and thanks a lot for listening.